everyone, my name is Jemai McKinney, or you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. I want to discuss Chase Young and the Washington Redskins in this episode right here. So Chase Young is officially a Washington Redskin. I felt that was definitely the player that the Redskins need to take in the 2020 NFL Draft. It was pretty much undebatable after Joe Burrow got picked no more overall by the Bengals right there. And I believe Chase Young is going to immediately make the Washington Redskins defense an elite unit. I don't think this is hard to figure out, guys. You know, there's really no weakness to Chase Young's game. It really is no weakness. No weakness once again. This guy is 6'5", 265 pounds. He's got the size. He's got the quickness. He can beat you with power and a bull rush. He can beat you with speed off the edge. His ball get, get off is crazy. It's insane. Um, he's very good against the run. That's what a lot of people don't talk about. They just talk about the fact that Chase Young is a great pass rusher. And I will admit, he's a he's definitely a excellent pass rusher. But I don't think that Chase Young gets enough credit for how good his run defense actually is. So Chase Young is the full package man. And listen, I believe that Chase Young is going to one day develop into the best defensive player in the NFL. I know I don't give that praise to a lot of defensive players, you know, that have come out of college recently. But man, Chase Young is the one guy that I believe that can actually happen to. I really do firmly believe that Chase Young is the best pass rusher to come out of the NFL draft since Khalil Mack. And I do believe he has the potential to become better than Khalil Mack. And like I said... I believe that he's going to one day become a defensive player of the year and maybe arguably the best defensive player in the NFL. He has that much potential. And I don't think anyone in history is ever going to quite catch Lawrence Taylor. But if you were to put a gun to my head and ask me what player can get the closest to potentially surpassing maybe a Lawrence Taylor, I'm going to say it's Chase Young. I really do firmly believe he's that good. And what people have to realize is that Chase Young is going to get maximized simply due to the fact that he has a very good coaching staff working with him. Ron Rivera is one of the best defensive minds in the entire NFL. His defenses in Carolina were virtually never terrible. Ron Rivera is going to get the most out of Chase Young. Jack Del Rio as the defensive coordinator, that's a match made in heaven. And listen, Chase Young is joined by four first-rounders on the Redskins defensive line, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allender, two very talented defensive tackles. Montez Sweat, who I was very high on a year ago that the Redskins drafted. I felt that he could become one of the better edge rushers in the NFL. He's a freaky athlete. He came on to, he, he really, you know, picked up things late in the season. The second half of the season, he was one of the best rookie defensive ends. Um, Ryan Kerrigan is very consistent. And not to mention, Matt Ioannidis is a pretty darn good player as well. So look, Chase Young is not going to be able to be double teamed. If you double team Chase Young, you're going to have to account for Montez Sweat. You're going to have to account for all these, other, all these other guys. I like Chase Young being a great fit for the Redskins defense. They added to their secondary. You know, they added Ronald Darby. They added Kendall Fuller. Not the sexiest signings, I would say, but at least they are trying to improve the secondary. Could they use another defensive back or two? Yes, I do believe so. And I do believe that's a unit that they that the Redskins can look to continue to improve. But when you have a defensive line that is that ferocious, your secondary doesn't need to be all that great. That's just the reality of the situation. And listen, the Redskins have very solid inside linebackers as well. Ruben Foster and Cole Holcomb, I think they can play a lot. And I believe the Redskins are going to be a top 10 defense. So what does that mean? I believe that's going to improve the team. Because last year, when we, when we look at the top 10 defenses, as far as points per game were allowed last year, the Patriots, Bills, Baltimore, Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Chicago, Kansas City, Minnesota, Denver, and Green Bay. Those were, those were the top 10 defenses as far as allowing points per game last season. Nine of those 10 teams that I mentioned won eight games. Eight of those 10 teams won 10 games. Right off the bat, I do believe the Redskins are at least potentially going to double their win total. I know they were picking number two overall in the draft this past year, but I'm just saying, man, when you have that great of a defense, 
you're not going to be a bad football team. I believe this coaching staff is going to put together this defense, and I believe this defensive line is going to carry this football team for the most part in 2020. I believe the, that the Washington Redskins can follow the San Francisco 49ers blueprint to potentially getting to a Super Bowl within the next decade. I do firmly believe this team has that has the talent on defense to become a championship level defense. I really do firmly believe that. The 49ers have five first rounders on their defensive line this past year. And while the 49ers secondary wasn't all that great, and while there, there were other components to their football team, they mostly won games by just pinning their ears back on defense and just saying, hey, we're going to dominate you and there's nothing you can do about it. It was a scary sight to watch at times. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had no answer for the 49ers defense because the, the Packers just could not block that team up front. And sometimes it doesn't matter how good of a quarterback you have. Sometimes it doesn't matter how good your scheme is as far as what you're drawing up on offense. I know the Kansas City Chiefs had an answer for the 49ers in the Super Bowl, but at least they got to a Super Bowl. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you call on offense. If you are if you can't block the opposing team's defensive line, it just doesn't matter. Not to mention, the 49ers also run the football at an extremely high rate. I do believe the Washington Redskins running game has a chance to be pretty good for the foreseeable future. Adrian Peterson is still chugging along. He nearly had 1,000 yards this past year. Jaden McKissick, he's a very versatile running back that can catch passes out of the backfield and run between the tackles as well. Darius Geis is an explosive dynamic player with the ball in his hands when he's healthy. Antonio Gibson out of Memphis is a very versatile player that is a three down running back. Peyton Barber, he's not bad at all. The Redskins have the ability to throw three to four really good running backs at you and just change the tempo of their offense and they can just ground and pound you and play really good defense. I do believe that the Redskins can follow the 49ers blueprint to potentially improving their team and getting to a Super Bowl within the near future if they improve their offense. Now, the offense last year was not very good. What the Redskins need to continue to do is they need to continue to improve their offensive line. I think their wide receivers are actually pretty darn good. I like, you know, Terry McLaurin a lot. I think he has a chance to be a special number one wide receiver. Steven Sims got a whole lot more playing time at the end of the year. He's a big play threat. And Antonio Gandy Golden, I think he has all the talent in the world. And Kelvin Harmon is another pretty big time target that has a lot of potential. So I think the Redskins have some very good young pass catchers. We'll see what Logan Thomas, you know, does at the tight end position. I do believe that he'll probably be the starting tight end this year. You know, Thaddeus Moss is an undrafted free agent out of LSU that I like a lot. So honestly, when you look at things, I think the Redskins have actually done a decent job of getting Dwayne Haskins some very quality wide receivers to throw to. All the all those guys I mentioned have a lot of potential. And Terry McLaurin, we already saw his potential last season with not great quarterback play. So I think Dwayne Haskins needs a good offensive line. We saw at Ohio State what he did with the 50 touchdown passes when he had time to throw in that pocket. If you build up a very good offensive line, I believe Dwayne Haskins can become a very, very good quarterback, you know? And I think, I think Dwayne Haskins is a guy that I believe in. I know a lot of people are banging on the kid. You know, he had a very up and down rookie season. But in the games, he actually started post Jay Gruden. So when Jay Gruden left the building, Dwayne Haskins threw seven touchdowns, to only three interceptions, and completed over 60% of his passes. Dwayne Haskins was not put in a situation to succeed this past year. Now with a much more stable coaching staff and an offensive coordinator, Scott Turner, that runs an offense that suits Dwayne Haskins' skill set with some very good young weapons, I believe Dwayne Haskins can become a great franchise quarterback. I know that Jimmy Garoppolo did not get things done when it mattered most for the 49ers, but I think Dwayne Haskins has much more potential than Jimmy Garoppolo as a pure thrower of the football. Did Jimmy Garoppolo have the season that Dwayne Haskins had at Ohio State when he was there for one year? I don't think so. What people fail to realize is that Dwayne Haskins only started one year of college football and he had the greatest season in Big Ten history. He doesn't really even know what he's quite doing yet.
once Dwayne Haskins gets more experience and once he gets his feet wet and once you continue to build up the offensive line, I believe Dwayne Haskins is going to be a legit quarterback. And realistically, Ron Rivera likes to play great defense and run the football. So all Dwayne Haskins really has to do is just make three to four really good throws a game and just not screw up the game plan. Just don't turn the football over. Just be efficient. Be that confident guy that you were at Ohio State and just throw them darts. I believe the Washington Redskins are on the rise. I do believe they have a chance to double their win total this year. And it's really mainly due to Chase Young and that defense. But going forward, I believe in Dwayne Haskins. But man, I can't overlook this defense, man. I believe the Redskins defense is going to be an elite unit this year. They're going to be a top 10 unit, in my opinion, easily. They just have way too much talent. Not to mention I get a coaching staff that's going to get the best out of those players. And I believe the future is bright for the Washington Redskins going forward with Dwayne Haskins, Ron Rivera, and of course, Chase Young and that defensive line. They could, for, they could definitely follow the 49ers blueprint to a Super Bowl one day. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. And I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day. And I'm out. Thank you.